Hi everyone, uh, so um, somebody just recently asked me a question about a video I did on this question a few months back and um, they made the excellent point actually and I completely agree with them that in part 2 A of K is actually definitely a polynomial of degree 4 it's you know the or less is kind of superfluous really um, I think and I just wanted to mention this right at the start I think it's because the approach which they thought that candidates would use only guarantees that it's degree 4 or less the stronger result where you rec where you do actually calculate AFK explicitly which is what I'm going to do in this video actually because I think it's probably the easiest way to get the marks um, it demonstrates that it's definitely a polynomial of degree 4 so um, whoever pointed out the poster well played yeah I, I completely agree um, um, I, I think that's the case um, and just to clear up any confusion that you might have um, I think uh, the reason why they've asked for degree 4 or less is simply because of the approach that they thought the candidates would use it's not because it actually is you know the, the poster is absolutely right I can't remember who said it now um, arc seller um, yeah I completely agree <laughs> so yeah there we go um, but yeah let me have another guy explaining this because I wasn't I looked at the video and firstly I was horrified to see me muddle up the limits I mean come on muddling up the limits that's a bad bad mistake so I just wanted to fix that really and have another guy explaining this question because it's really quite an abstract question and it's a uh, it's a good question though it really is it's all about functions now before I start let's talk about function transformations yeah let's talk about function transformations just before we actually do anything with the question function transformations yeah graph transformations I'm talking about here um, where you want to reflect in the line x equals a yeah because it's well worth talking about this uh, how do we reflect in the line x equals a well let's say you were reflecting in the line x equals 2 yeah and I explained this on the last video and let's say you had a little flag here like which looks something like that um, oh this is terrible let me do it do it on a uh, GeoGebra <laughs> I think it'll be better on GeoGebra um, one second uh, let me just put it across the screen so let's say we had a little flag like this um, zoom out a bit if we wanted to reflect that in the line x equals 2 let's put the line x equals 2 on here okay and then let's just make it look a bit nicer one second won't take a moment uh, cool Okay, so um, there's a line x equals 2. Everybody knows where that flag's going. Obviously, it's not exactly difficult to see. Um, it ends up here. Now, how can we do this using the transformations that we're already aware of? You know, reflecting just x and y axis and translating. Well, what we could do with this flag to take it to there is we could reflect it in the y axis where it ends up there. And then we could move it double the distance it is away from where, um, yeah, from the, the line x equals 2. In other words, because you've actually first reflected it and sent it far away in that direction in the y-axis, because that's a gap of 1, that's now going to be a gap of 2. And therefore, you're going to have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right if you see what I mean that's always going to be double the uh, line x equals 2 and that's why I just wanted to quickly show you that that's why the best way of thinking about these function transformations or, I mean not the best way necessarily there's lots of other ways of thinking about it but the way I think about it is I think if I want to reflect in the line x equals 2 then what I could do is I could reflect in the y-axis yeah and then translate four to the right now how do you translate four to the right well you replace x with x plus sorry x minus four yeah to move it four to the right yeah and that's going to give you f of four minus x yeah now in general yeah so let's translate by vector four zero yeah in general and definitely you want to know this before you go in uh, to reflect in the line x equals k f of x is going to become f of 2 sorry yeah f of 2k minus x yeah that reflects 
anything in the line x equals k. That's a really good thing to know actually for any of the extension papers that you're doing. It's really, really useful. It's come in useful lots of times on mat. Um, it's helped me on step before as well. It's, a, it's an interesting way of looking at symmetry. Um, a little question for you which you can think about how would you do the same thing for the line y equals k yeah how could you do a very very similar trick for the line y equals k if you can find a general result for that post it in the comments below the video okay so let's get on with a question now because that's going to come in really handy for me when i get to part three and part four um and part five i think to some extent Okay, so let's do this. Uh, what have we got here? We've got, you know, an integral of a cubic. We're trying to find this area. We want to find right down the area in terms of two integrals. Well, if I could get this right this time, <laughs> that's why I was horrified. It's like, what I need to do is I need to integrate from naught to k, uh, x, x minus k, x minus 2. And you could just write down fk of x there. And then I need to add on the next area but the next area is definitely going to be negative isn't it if you ha found it as an integral it would be negative and therefore we're just going to take it away instead to make sure it gets added on now the mistake I made in the last video was I had these limits the wrong way around I had it at 2 there and k there um, and that just you know didn't make sense to me I was looking back at the video I was like wincing as I saw that so there we go that's all we need for that first bit Okay, right. For part two, definitely, if I was doing this in an exam, I'd be scratching my head thinking, well, what, what do they really want? Like, uh, you know, how much detail do they need in the answer? Um, it's well worth actually looking at their solutions. What they expected you to do, yeah, four marks this is worth as well, was just generalise and say, well, actually what you've got is a polynomial of degree 3 plus k times a polynomial of degree 2. Why have we got that here? Well, if we look at what we were doing... Um, if you actually multiplied it out, which is the way I'm going to do it, yeah. if you multiplied this out, what would you have here? You would have, um, think about this bit first, you're going to get x squared uh, minus x times k plus 2 plus 2k. And all of that's going to be multiplied by x, if you see what I mean. Um, now, what that's going to give you is it's going to give you an x cubed yeah, which is a polynomial of degree 3 in x. And then why is it a polynomial of degree 2 multiplied by k? Well, because you're going to get x times x there, which is x squared times by a k. And therefore, you've got a polynomial of de degree 2 in x multiplied by k. Um, and that's that's why this uh, solution works as it does. It's not a difficult way to do it. When you see how they've explained it, it's like, yeah, you know, it, it's obvious. I completely agree with you. It's absolutely obvious. Um, and interestingly, this is why they say, I'm certain this is why they say, prove that it's a polynomial of degree, um, a, 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 a polynomial of degree four or less. Now, the fact is, as they state in the solutions here, and this is what I'm actually going to show, that a of k equals that, which is clearly a quartic in k. Yeah, so I absolutely agree with you, Arcella, that it's a quartic in, you know, degree four in k. Um, but if you did their approach and you only did it as far as this stage, it's possible if you didn't actually analyze it further that that could be a polynomial of degree four or less. And they were basically saying that we didn't want you to go into too much detail, just to show us it's a polynomial of degree four or less. Um, but if you work it through, it's obvious that it's a polynomial of degree four. Um, it's definitely not less than that. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so let's actually work it through because it's not difficult to work through. Um, it really isn't. It doesn't take too long. Um, we're going to have x cubed uh, minus x squared k plus 2 uh, plus 2kx dx minus pretty much the same thing which is with these limits. Yeah, the more I looked at this question, the more I thought, well, it doesn't take that long to actually, you know, especially if they're giving you four marks. I mean, if only you knew that. But it says you're not required to calculate it, which kind of puts you off doing this step. But they would have accepted it if you did. And that's often the case, actually. I've seen A-level questions where exactly the same thing happens, where they say, oh, you don't have to do this. But they do accept it if you do it. And it's actually easy enough just to crank through the algebra and do it. It's not, not that onerous, really. OK, so we're going to have x to the 4 minus x cubed over 3 k plus 2, because k is just a constant, plus uh, k uh, x squared between k and 0, and then exactly the same thing between k up to 2. Uh, plus k x squared 
between k uh, k and 2. Let's get the limits the right way around this time. OK, so what does that come to? We're going to have... Um, why have I not got my over 4 there? That is poor, isn't it? I mean, look look at this. I just make so many mistakes nowadays. It's it's a joke. OK, so what have we got? We've got k to the 4 over 4 minus k cubed over 3, k plus 2 plus k cubed yeah, uh, minus 0 if you like, um, but 0 throughout just gives you 0 because everything's been times by 0. So minus, OK, here let's be a little bit more careful. We've got 2 to the 4 over 4, which is 4. 2 cubed over 3, which is 8, 8 over 3, k plus 2. And then we're going to have 4k. Then we're going to get minus exactly the same thing over here. So that's going to end up doubling it because it's a minus minus. So k to the 4 over 4 minus k cubed over 3k plus 2 plus k cubed. So let's do this a sensible way. Let's actually just double because you've got something take away minus itself. Yeah, In other words, something plus itself. That just doubles this first term. And we're going to have k to the 4 over 2 minus 2k cubed over 3k plus 2. Uh, plus 2k cubed, yeah? And then we've got this little... Now, let's actually simplify this. We're going to have 4, and then we're going to have minus 8 thirds k. Oh, plus a 4k. Well, that's like 12k over 3, isn't it? And minus 8k over 3 plus 12k over 3 is going to be 4k over 3. Might as well simplify that now. Uh, plus 4k over 3. And then we're going to have minus 16 over 3. Um, we might as well simplify that with a 4 as well, mightn't we? As that's 4 is 12 over 3. When you take away 16 over 3, you're actually going to get end up with minus 4 over 3, I think, because that's 12 over 3 minus 16 over 3. Yeah, minus 4 over 3. So let's just simplify that right away. Um, and yeah, I think I've got the signs right there. OK, so let's try and write down our final answer. Now, we are going to have lots of k to the power of 4s here because we're going to have basically a half k to the 4 minus 2 thirds k to the 4. Yeah, And a half minus 2 thirds is going to be 3 sixths minus 4 sixths, which is minus a sixth. So it's minus k to 4 over 4. And then what we got for the cube terms? Well, we've got um, minus 4k cubed over 3, then plus 6k cubed over 3. Well, that's plus 2k cubed over 3. OK, have we got any k squared terms here? Um, I don't think so. And then we're going to have a minus 4k over 3 plus 4 over 3. OK, right, did I get that right? <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, 4 over 3 minus 4k over 3. 4 over 3 minus 4k over 3. Um, and then plus 2k cubed over 3 minus k to the 4 over 6. Plus 2k over 3 minus uh, k to the 4 over... Oh, did I write? I'm sure I said 6, but then wrote down 4. And it's <laughs> clearly, you know, so many careless errors. Um, it, we're doing a half minus 2 thirds, and that's the same as 3 sixths minus 4 sixths, uh, which is minus a sixth, yeah. So apologies for that. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's not that bad, is it, really, just cranking through the algebra for that bit. For four marks, I think I'd feel more confident doing it. And it clearly is a quartic um, of degree four. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's sorry, it's a quartic in K. Uh, so, yeah, it's a polynomial in K of degree four. It's not less. OK, part three. Let's quickly run through this. Um, I like these kinds of questions because it's just straightforward algebra. Um, we're just verifying that that's true for any t. Well, um, f of k of 1 plus t, we just write down what it is because we already know what f of k of x is. Uh, well, it's just this, but with x is replaced with 1 plus t's. Um, so that's going to be 1 plus t minus k. And that's going to be 1 plus t minus 2, which is minus 1, and 1 plus t minus 2 is going to be 1 plus t, yeah, because we've got 1 plus t, and we're taking away 2, so we're going to end up with minus 1 plus t. OK, so that's f of k of 1 plus t. Now let's try and work out, gradually, the right-hand side, yeah, let's just point out that's the left-hand side. The right-hand side, 
Well, to work that out, let's just say consider f of 2 minus k of x first. Let's just write that down. Uh, f of 2 minus k of x is where? Let me write down our original function, fk of x. So I can see it. fk of x is x, x minus k, x minus 2. OK, I can see it now. <laughs> OK, all I'm going to do is start with first, build it up slowly, swap the k's for 2 minus k's. So x, x minus 2 minus k, x minus 2. In other words, that's the same as x. Uh, and then we're going to have x plus k minus 2. We're going to have x minus 2. Cool. OK, so that's f of 2 minus k, but of x. So f of 2 minus k of 1 minus t. Well, we need to trade all x's for 1 minus t's. 1 minus t minus 2 is going to be minus 1 minus t plus k. And then 1 minus t minus 2 is going to be minus 1 minus t. Yeah? OK, that's that one a bit done. Now let's just uh, multiply it by minus 1. So, what am I going to do here? Well, I want to change it into, remember, this, yeah? So, I'm, I'm happy to times this by minus 1, because that gives me the first bracket. Um, now, these two, I do actually want to change the sign, because if you look, that's backwards. Oh, sorry, yeah, where, where am I here? Yeah, yeah that, that's backwards, because I've got 1 minus t here, and that's t minus 1. And here, the sign's all the opposite, isn't it? 1 minus 1, t minus t, k, you know, minus k goes to a k. So, really, all we're doing here is we're timesing this by minus 1 and this by minus 1, which means it's not changing it, because, you know, we've timesed it by 1 overall, <laughs> if you like. There's lots of ways of looking at that. So, 1 plus t minus k... And then I'm going to have a uh, one uh, t minus one. So I've times that by minus one, and I've times that by minus one, which means I haven't changed the value of it because I've, you know, if I had a product uh, something like six times minus two times minus three, if I times those by minus one, obviously it equals thirty six. Well, that's the same as six times two times three. If I change the sign on two things in the product, then it doesn't do anything to it. Okay, and hence. You know, I might put right-hand side equals here now. Hence, left-hand side equals right-hand side, and the result is established. OK, right. Part 3. Part 4, sorry. Um, how can the graph y equals fk of x be transformed to the graph of y equals 2 minus k of x? Well, this is nice, isn't it? Because if I just use part 3's answer, but with a little substitution, knowing what I know about reflections in lines, yeah, I would just say, if I know that f of k of 1 plus t is the negative of f of 2 minus k of 1 minus t. This is trying to show you that there's some symmetry when you're reflecting in a line. Yeah, um, that's what it's trying to show you. Um, and, and I do want to demonstrate this in a second but I, what I did just a second ago when I was looking at this again was I thought to myself well if I let x equal 1 minus t then obviously, um, if I'm working this out, x minus 1 is minus t, so 1 minus x is t, and so 1 plus t is going to be 2 minus x. Yeah. Then I can clearly see that f of k of 2 minus x is going to be the same as the negative of f of 2 minus k of x. Yeah. In other words, how are these two graphs related? Well, it's particularly obvious if we put the minus now on this side, and you can just say, well, if I want to get from, you know, if, if f of 2 minus k of x is exactly the same as f of k after it's been reflected in the line x equals 1 and then reflected in the y-axis, <laughs> yeah, then it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, so how are they related? Hence, the relationship is... Reflect in line x equals 1 and then reflect in the x-axis because the y-coordinates have changed from positive to negative. Yeah, um, if you like, w all that's happened is, you know, when, when we've gone, you know, to get from f of k of x all the way to f to the 2 minus k of x, first thing you do 
you know, you do it via this. You you need f of k to become f of two. Oh, sorry, f k of x to become f k of two minus x. That's a reflection in the line x equals one. And then you need to make it negative. And that's a reflection in the x-axis, and you get there. That's what we're really saying. Okay, so that's that one. Um, that makes loads of sense as well, because you know what are we really saying here? Well, now now I'm going to deduce this. Yeah, what what am I going to de deduce here? Well, what we're saying is, let me just get my graph over here. One second, I'm just going to. I was doing this a second ago. Uh, let me just get rid of lots of the things here. Might even be better if I just start again. I don't know. Let me just try and unclip these. <laughs> Go away. Have I got rid of them all yet? No, almost. Okay, and then I want that and that in. What's this doing here? Oh, there we go. Oh, no, no, no. Undo. There we go. Okay, right. Um, here's the graph. I've just let k equal a half here because I didn't want it looking too symmetrical right on one. I just wanted to show you this property holds for any value of k. So I've said k is a half, yeah? Now, if I was to replace k with uh, the minus, uh, you know, of 2 minus k here, what happens? Well, sure enough, it ends up having reflective symmetry in the line x equals 1. Do you see what I mean? Now, I wanted to show you how this you know, shows you a of k equals a of 2 minus k. It's simply because the area has been reflected and then turned upside down, yeah? Reflected in the line x equals 1, which is halfway between 0 and 2. Yeah, that's why this one's now over here. And then if you turn that area upside down, well, of course, the area is going to be exactly the same. So, you know, how am I going to explain this? Um, it would be interesting to see how they do it in the uh, answers, actually. But quite simply, yeah? As we are just reflecting twice, the area is preserved. The area is preserved. And A of K equals A of 2 minus K. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's just going to be the case. What are they saying here? Like, um, do they go into much detail about why that's just fine? Um, no, <laughs> it's literally just mentioned as a, a as a comment at the end. Um, I think it's direct. You know, they've just said as a because oh, they've described it as a rotation, a reflection, and a reflection um, is area preserving. Uh, they just <laughs> they just say it down like that. Good, because I would do the same thing. I would just uh, say it's it's obvious now. Uh, <laughs> um, like I say, especially from GeoGebra, you can see we're just you know. Before, we were dealing with this area up here and this area down here. Well, if you reflect that in the line x equals 1, you've now got this. And now, you know, and, and then you reflect it in the x-axis, you're going to have exactly the same graph, and hence the area is preserved. OK, so let's actually do the last bit. Now, the last bit, yeah, I had a sort of clever argument here. I kind of thought about it like this, um, which is very similar. They've, they've got a much better way of doing it in the mark scheme as normal, but this is the way my brain worked. I was kind of like, well, okay, I know A of K is quartic, so I said, let, um, you know, we, we know all expressions for A of, you know, um, stuff, if you like, yeah. We know uh, A of stuff is quartic. Let me just write that down first. A of stuff is quartic. Guaranteed, and it's not less than or equal to quartic; it's quartic. And so, let's think of consider a of u plus one. Yeah, and let's write it down as a quartic, as like you know, little a u to the four plus b u cubed plus c u squared plus d u plus e. Yeah. Okay, as now let's use the property we've just shown that a of k is a of 2 minus k. So as a u plus 1 equals a of 2 minus u plus 1, yeah, which is of course a of 2 minus 1, which is 1, and then we're going to get 1 minus u, yeah. We can then therefore say, hence, um, a of 1 minus u, we 
well, what's that going to be equal to? Well, let's have a look at this, you know, and what, what's happened here? We've replaced u with a minus u, haven't we? Because this is 1 plus u, and this is 1 minus u. So we can say this is the same as a minus u to the power 4 plus b minus u cubed plus c minus u squared plus d times minus u plus e. Yeah. Um, and as we can see, this obviously, we already know it's the same as that. Yeah, let me not even bother with the brackets here, because I wrote it down up here. It should equal a of u plus 1. Yeah. Um, well, just by comparing coefficients, we can see this can only be true. if b equals 0 in my case and d equals 0 yeah because the other terms are going to be identical you're going to have a u to the power of 4 same as this one you're going to have c u squared same as that one and you're going to have an e on the end same as that one but these are going to have different signs and that's going to be only the case if b equals 0 and d equals 0 and so I can say so a u plus 1 must be able to be written as um, a u to the power of 4 plus c u squared plus e yeah but if we let u to plus 1 equal x set it equal to x then this is going to be oh sorry k is it they want us to show let u plus 1 equal k and then we're going to have a k equals a k minus 1 to the power of 4 plus c times k minus 1 squared plus e yeah and we've proved their result yeah um but yeah it's essentially about the powers here that, that you know and uh, you're essentially just showing the symmetry you're just using that result above to show that that's the case and they didn't ask us to calculate them explicitly which is interesting so yeah there we go that's my um slightly maybe only ever so slightly improved attempt at that question remember when i'm doing these papers i'm not claiming that i've got um, a brilliant answer i'm not claiming that my answers would score full marks and i fully invite everyone to comment and criticize and point out where i've made mistakes or anything like that please do i will make mistakes and if even if it just opens up discussion of how we handle these incredibly difficult questions uh, i think that's a good thing i really do so yeah, I look forward to hearing any comments that you might have. And please, you know, do do criticize if you think criticism is warranted. <laughs> okay, bye bye.